Now we move on to uh, wired communication, okay, where data is being transferred inside a wired medium. Okay, so it says over here devices can use cables to communicate with each other via a wired connection. So for example, you can use an HDMI, I told you it stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. So this HDMI can be used for digital video connections. For digital audio connections, you can use something called S uh, or the PDIF cable, okay. For personal headphone connection, you can use something known as a mini jack. And for storage, okay, between a hard disk and your computer or between your pen drive and your computer, you can use something which we call a USB. And for networking purposes, we use something which we call Ethernet cables, okay. So starting off, let's look at what a USB is. So USB is a very common connection type. All of you have used it somewhere or other between, for example, in your pen drive or, for example, to connect your hard disk to your laptop. Okay, so for example, to connect your smartphone to your laptop, you'll be using a USB connection. So USB has been through a number of revisions, and each revision allows faster data transfer speeds. So initially, we had USB 1, which had a white color port. Then we had USB 2, which had a black color port. And then we had USB 3, which had a blue color port and we are still at the moment in 2020 we are in USB 3. Uh, also there is something which is red color which means it's a always active USB. So certain laptops the USB port has a red color port which means that even if your laptop is on sleep you can still uh, connect your mobile phone to it for example and your mobile phone could get charged. Okay which means even if the device is on sleep this USB still has current flowing in it. So what you need to understand is in each revision, the speed of data transfer has increased. Then we have something which we call Ethernet cables. Okay, we generally call these Internet cables, which is wrong. We should be calling these Ethernet cables. Ethernet allows the user to connect to wired networks. So if you want to connect to a wired network, these are the kind of cables you would be using, Ethernet cables. As Ethernet technology develops, the speed at which data can be transferred between devices is also improved, okay? So these cables, as you can see, this says CAT5E. Basically, it means Category 5E. So this is Category 5E, then Category 6, Category 6A, then we have Category 7. So in each of these models, the speed got better. The speed of data transfer got better, okay? Here it says, Ethernet Ethernet cables can be 100 meters long before the signals they carry start to lose quality. Okay, so these cables, like I told you previously, also every 100 meters the signal starts to drop very lightly. Then we also do have something which we call Wi Fi. Now, Wi Fi comes under wireless communication. Okay, it's not wired, it's wireless. So, Wi Fi is a wireless technology used to connect devices to a network. So Wi-Fi uses something which we call IEEE 802.11 specification of standards for wireless communication. So when it comes to wireless communication, the rules are defined using IEEE 802.11. Okay, the specification is revised regularly to take account of improvements in technology. Okay, each revision of the technology improves the speed at which data can be transferred and increases the distance over which devices can communicate, uh, can connect them. So Wi-Fi is also continuously being improved. In each revision, you know, the speed uh, is increased. Also, the range of how long the Wi-Fi connection can be is also increased. Next, we have another wireless communication method, which we call Bluetooth. Okay, so Bluetooth is a type of wireless connectivity that lets devices connect over short distances. When it comes to Wi-Fi, you can connect over a bit of a large distance, but when it comes to Bluetooth, it's only over short distances. It cannot carry as much data as Wi-Fi. Bluetooth devices need to be paired with each other before they can communicate. Okay, so when you want to connect two devices using Bluetooth, both devices have to be paired to each other. Okay, that's the word you have to use. Don't say connected, say paired. So the difference between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you can see Wi-Fi has a much bigger range. Wi-Fi signals can travel a longer distance than Bluetooth. Uh, the speed or the bandwidth, Wi-Fi has a better bandwidth than Bluetooth. When it comes to power, when it comes to battery consumption, Wi-Fi consumes more power than Bluetooth. So this is a disadvantage for, uh, for Wi-Fi, okay? Wi-Fi consumes more battery than Bluetooth. When it comes to security, 
Wi-Fi is much more secure than Bluetooth when it can uh, can connect multiple devices simultaneously yes in Wi-Fi you can connect to many devices at the same time but when it comes to Bluetooth you can only communicate with one device at a time you can connect to multiple but communication can take place only between one device at a time okay so this is the differences between Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both of them are wireless these are their differences over here it says Wi-Fi Direct is an alternative to Bluetooth. It is a low power version of Wi-Fi that can connect two devices directly over a short range. Okay, so Wi-Fi Direct is uh, another option for Bluetooth. It you it consumes less power than Wi-Fi and can connect devices over a short range. Uh, then we do have another wireless communication method and this is used in mobile phone networks which is 3G and 4G Okay, 3G and 4G are sometimes referred to as mobile broadband Okay, they are used to provide internet access to mobile devices such as smartphones and tablet devices when a Wi-Fi signal is not available Okay, so 3G and 4G are mobile phone internet connections Okay, so when you do not have Wi-Fi you can use your mobile phone SIM which will be using 3G or 4G to connect to the internet. Then you do have something which is very, very weak, which we call as infrared signals. Okay, infrared signals cannot carry much data and have a very, very short range. Okay, so the transmitters, okay, transmitters means the sender and the receiver, the sending device and the receiving device must have a clear line of sight because this allows the signal to travel in a straight line between them without being blocked by solid objects like walls okay so for example infrared signals cannot go through walls cannot go through doors okay it is often used in remote control devices such as the television remote control so for example to send small messages like fast forward play pause increase volume decrease volume switch on switch off you can use infrared signals okay so look this remote is communicating with this television using infrared signals and remember both the sender and the receiver both devices have to be clearly in front of each other otherwise signals are not going to reach okay so the weakest of these signals we have learned so far is infrared we do have one more and a description has not been given to you because in chapter number five the next chapter we will be learning about this in depth but it is something new which we call near field communication so this is used it can be used in a mobile phone it can be used in a card so what happens is both devices have to be extremely close to each other then both devices can communicate so this is mostly used when it comes to financial transactions okay so when it comes to final financial transactions for example if you're going to of supermarket once you have to pay the bill you don't have to pay using cash you can simply open your nfc app okay and uh, you can keep this open the app and keep the phone very close to the credit card reader the relevant amount would be transferred okay and then that particular amount would be reduced from your bank account more of this will be coming up in chapter number five that is why i did not put a very big description over here but do remember nfc is also a wireless communication method okay so so far we have learned about five different uh, wireless communication methods number one is wi-fi number two bluetooth then we also learned of something known as wi-fi direct and then we learned of 3g and 4g infrared and finally we learned of NFC the weakest of all these signals is infrared and the most powerful of these signals is Wi-Fi okay so in the meantime if you could attempt uh, question numbers 17 all the way up to uh, question number 21 okay from 17 to 21 okay please do attempt it uh, in our next video we'll be continuing from slide number 29 where we have a few post paper questions and we have a small part that that compares wired and wireless connections